Hello guys and welcome to a new video today by me Vulcan. Today I am playing NATO and this is a ranked 1v1 on the map Summer Night. And it's the one of the first night maps they've released. I'm not sure if there is any others. I don't play enough anymore to uh, really find out. But anyway, this is a ranked game and my opponent is level 100. I am around level 43 I think. So he has got a massive experience advantage on me and he has a elo which is 1850 something I think and I have a elo of 1500. <laughs> so yeah he outranks me quite a bit but anyway this is a ranked game and I decided after playing a, a previous game with him which was a draw uh, he won by six points I think it was um, I decided to change my strategy completely after watching his last game and it worked out very well so I go for a very air heavy uh, game in this you can see that I've already spawned four Apaches with each have a gazelle for their own recon so they have the max range ability for their ATGMs I have these gazelle cannons with uh, hogs which are basically slow uh, helicopters but they basically spam rockets the deployment was reasonably quickly or went really reasonably quickly so the game should start shortly I have a Sultan for my main base I have a M577 CBC for Bravo covered by Fooks with Jaegers and Spartans with uh, blowpipes which are the British infantry AA they're not amazing but they do the job. They scare. They scare away enemy aircraft. I've also got my base AA, of course. But the game started now, and you can see that basically what I'm doing. I'm splitting up my forces. I've got my two Apaches with a gazelle to go on the right side. I've got my gazelle with two Apaches to go on the left side. And these gazelles with hogs are basically pushing straight up the middle towards these two bridges. One at Golf and one at Echo because these are the two roads as you can see I didn't know this at the time but you can see that that's the way he heads so I get an instant advantage I for forgot my recon in the middle my ground recon so you can see that I bring that in afterwards I'm gonna change to my point of view now so that you can see what happens during the game now I spot his MI9 and I know that ca gazelle cannons are very good at taking out enemy aircraft so I make sure to forget about the left side net for now and use these cannons to chase after the MI9. In the meantime, my gazelle has basically spotted these APCs heading over on the left side and my hogs go to intercept them. With the uh, pushing forwards of my gazelles, you can see that I actually uncover a push on the right, which is where my Apaches come in handy. My gazelle keeps them uh, notified with recon while my Apaches kind of scout around that group there because I'm not too sure where his um, AA is at this point. You can see that my Apache is taking care of the uh, APCs and my hogs take care of the infantry on the left side. I actually lose two gazelle cannons uh, to AA in this forest here. I can't spot it because I don't have decent enough a recon up there so I make sure to move up this gazelle on the right. Another one, another gazelle falls down but my hogs are still attacking on the left while my Apaches actually move around behind him. Now you're probably wondering why I'm doing that because it's quite risky but basically I saw that he doesn't have anything in Foxtrot which means for this map he's gone for the strategy where you basically push up your command vehicle and take either Delta or Echo from the start which allows you to bring in reinforcements closer to the enemy however if uh, the enemy spots this i.e. me then they instantly have the advantage because they can cut you off and you'll see that is exactly what I do because I take a very air uh, heavy strategy in this I am very manoeuvrable and am able to actually take care of anything he tries to push at me because I have control of all these points and he can't reinforce. 
without putting a uh, without putting a command vehicle at risk. Now you're probably wondering again why I'm pushing Apaches up to attack AA. Now the Apaches actually have a longer range than that AA and um, therefore the ATGMs would have taken care of them. Unfortunately I have to move, well I move my gazelle back so I lose sight of them and my hogs on the left go in for a little scouting mission. These hogs and the gazelles at the beginning were expendable for me. They are reasonably cheap, you can see that the hogs are actually 25 points to uh, bring in which is nothing at all for a rocket mounted helicopter and you've also got the gazelles which are like 20 each and they have come with a, a, a basically an auto cannon on them. Now seeing the approach of these AA uh, vehicles I basically move my gazelle to a safer spot where it will continue to hover and then I push in my Apaches to take them out. And you can see here the enemy AA isn't even in range but my Apaches have the chance to fire their ATGMs at them no problem. With two ATGMs I take out two AA missiles. And the third one takes out by another ATGM. After taking out those AA, I know that there's still those APCs left in that forest there. Therefore, I just make sure to keep my recon here and just send my Apaches back to reload on uh, their Hellfire missiles. And therefore, push up my Fooks instead to go and see what's inside this forest here. Now again, Fooks with Jaegers are very good expendable troops because they only cost 20 each to pull in and you can pull in about I think it's 20 of them during the entire game which is a lot. Now you can see that my gazelles move around I'm slowly reconning this side I spot his BRDM and as soon as I see that I move these Apaches across because I know that I'm going to be able to get a shot at it. However I make sure to pull my gazelle back as soon as possible so that he doesn't spot that I've spotted it. <laughs> so it gives me the advantage of surprise when I come in with the Apaches to take that out. And I move forward uh, looks on over the bridge to make sure that I have continued recon for this push uh, if there's any pushes onto Bravo. He is continually pestering me with uh, I think they're Danners throughout the entire game but uh, luckily due to me having armoured uh, command vehicles that's not too much of a problem. You can see he took care of my uh, Jaegers and Fooks on in that forest which means he has better infantry than me. My Lux pushes forwards to basically see what's going on and in the meantime I push my Apaches forwards and they're firing 80 gems at his BRDM which has no chance of getting away once those 80 gems have fired. After that's done I make sure to pull them back as quickly as possible so his Tunguska doesn't get into range to shoot them down. His Conkers on the right manage to outrange my Lux and take that out. And a Lux on the left manages to push into this forest here and take care of the last APC on the left. So you can see again, I'm actually controlling the map completely. I can see if he's going to bring a command vehicle over here uh, into Echo because of this recon helicopter. That is why his command vehicle was in here. He was trying to protect this uh, protect this command vehicle from being taken out basically. Now with that gone he's only got one command vehicle left that I know of because golf is taken. Therefore the only way he's going to be able to get reinforcements now is by moving the command vehicle out of golf which will tell me as soon as golf goes dark. You can see already that I'm basically 400 points up and my Apaches see this Tunguska and because I don't really want to uh, leave him with any AA at all I basically rush it with the Apaches 
Although they're firing at these APCs at this point, as soon as they get in range, they change target to the Tunguska. Now luckily with their aiming systems of the Hellfires, I managed to uh, fire off enough missiles to take that out before he manages to get a shot on my Apaches. The good thing about Apaches is that they can actually take two shots without actually with, without dying. Or they can take one shot without dying and then they have to take two to die. Which means when they come up or rush a Tunguska um, or any other missile AA which isn't as accurate they will manage to destroy it most of the time before they get shot down themselves. The only time that really works though is if you have more than one because if you put in one versus one uh, an AA if it hits will nine times out of ten knock out something on the helicopter making it either stunned or yeah just uh, worried or you know something that makes it le have a lesser ability to reload as quick making it vulnerable to attack now once that AA was taken care of I again have to go back to uh, reload my Apaches and I've started to move up another command vehicle into Alpha just to maximize on the amount of points I'm getting so I remain uh, with the advantage throughout the rest of the game you can see that again I brought in Spartans with blowpipes and Fooks with Jaegers to just defend that. I only using light uh, ground throughout this entire game. You can see that I actually only have maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ground units maybe, some of that. Which is very low for any game or more game. And that is basically due to my air strategy. Now, the the reason I took an air strategy was because I watched the last game a lot versus this same opponent and saw his strategy, which basically left him without much missile AA. And that is why I have managed to manipulate him so much with Apaches. Now at this point you can see that I'm pretty much just bringing in uh, mortars to be able to fire onto the middle and infantry to basically spread around and also recon to place around the different points on the map where he could possibly move a command vehicle. Now at this point I assumed that I would have to artillery the middle until he died or I got enough points to win and that was because I wasn't confident enough that he didn't have any more missile AA that he would use to kill my Apaches and also with this anti-aircraft that he or anti-aircraft um, artillery that he uses if I go close to the forest and don't spot him until I get close he can move the anti-air out of the forest and take down my Apaches very quickly Now his Grenzers in this bush here actually do a very very good job throughout this and um, my Jaegers actually struggle to take them out because they keep getting routed and in the meantime I've used these hogs to basically strafe this bush with rockets. Now the thing that hogs are good for are taking out rushes and also Disable, disabling troops like um, infantry and stuff like that. You can see up here I'm still harassing him and taking out his AA. As soon as I see any of that mis uh, machine gun AA I basically just rush it with the Apaches just so that I get the advantage of knowing that he is going to have less at golf if I ever need to attack it. But you can see I'm always at an advantage throughout this game. He's rushing these Scots forwards at the moment to try and take out my recon. But I just keep moving it back and he doesn't get anywhere near it. Or not near enough anyway to take it out with his machine guns. And now my artillery has arrived 
it's only mortars but I know that he has a command vehicle here because my gazelle spotted it earlier so I basically start mortaring this area and you can see that he begins to move his UAZ back to a different spot now with that done I make sure to move my AMLs forwards so that I can again get another shot onto his UAZ once it reaches this middle area My Apaches take care of these uh, leftover APCs. And my AMLs start shooting at the middle of golf again. I have to keep adjusting where they're firing from because he starts firing at them with his own artillery which is quite annoying. I managed to finish off the Grenzer squad with the Apache but um, yeah I have to keep moving these around but luckily they're very fast and that means that I can just outmanoeuvre his artillery with my own until I eventually forget about them. <laughs> now again I'm curious as to where what he's going to plan on doing. Golf's gone dark and I'm not sure what his next move is going to be. Therefore I make sure to get my recon over to the right here to see if there's any chance of him bringing a command vehicle to any one of these points. You can see that this looks would cover anything coming through this bridge and my folks on the left would maybe spot any helicopters that he may have somewhere. Now it is unlikely that he had helicopters at this point because I would have spotted them by now with all the recon that I have. And you can see there that I forgot about my AMLs and they actually take two direct hits uh, from his artillery. Now where he was arching the middle, I'd had to bring in uh, some resupply to basically fix up my units. Uh, I use Pumas in this battle. They're, they're kind of different to Chinooks in that they're faster and smaller which means they're less they're harder to spot and they carry a thousand supplies which is I think the same as a Chinook but they're faster and smaller which is which is cool I'm not sure I think they cost a little less as well whereas if I was going to do it properly then I'd probably bring in a super Chinook but these Pumas are good for uh, quick resupply and considering I'm going for a mobile strategy uh, pumas are the best option. This puma here is going to go in and repair and reload these AMLs. And at this point I'm pretty sure that I'm going to win this battle. Now if he wanted to win this what he's going to have to do is get his command vehicle to either Echo, Foxtrot or Delta so that he can bring in more reinforcements to deal with what I've got which would probably be AA. You can see here that I'm actually reinforcing my line with more recon so that I can make sure that I know everything that's going on around the map the entire time. And with my AMLs firing onto this place, I force another AA out of cover, which quickly gets taken out by my Apaches. I again see him moving his UAZ, so once I move my AMLs out of the way, unfortunately one gets picked off by his artillery, I start again to fire on that position. see throughout the entire game I'm bringing in more and more units just to make sure that I have everything covered. Here you can see him trying to work out where he can push across by sending his uh, supply trucks over to see if they get captured. 
Now I start firing on these because I don't necessarily want them and you can still get points from them if you don't capture them. But you capture them un automatically, unfortunately. So as soon as I get them, I make sure to just turn them around and send them back to him. Because they don't have any supplies in them and he's not going to be getting any supplies from anything. Here you can see he's pushing his conkers back to his main base to see if I have anything there. But uh, unfortunately for him, my Apaches are still around and therefore he pushes straight towards them. Now these conkers are actually max vets so they give me a reasonable, reasonable amount of points. You can see here that by me pushing these supply trucks back to him, I can actually find out where he has his units as well. And these two conkers over here are scouting over to Echo to see if I have anything defending that. The trouble is with my mobile strategy of air supremacy, it kind of doesn't mean he has a lot of choices. And you can see eventually he just makes a break for it with the UAZ using fast move to try and get it to Echo before I can take it out with the Apaches. And unfortunately with this gazelle here, these two conkers get destroyed and these and that UAZ with these two conkers and its and his last AA get spotted and it's my chance to just finish off the game with a single ATGM into his UAZ. Now he manages to get his UAZ into this forest here and his conkers continue down the road so I make sure to just quickly take them out as well as this uh, anti-aircraft vehicle over here. But now I know that his last command vehicle is sat in this forest here. So I make sure to pound, start pounding it with my AML mortars. And then move my, split up my Apaches and move them round to see if I can find it. And maybe get a shot at it. Now knowing that it's there pretty much undefended, it's my chance to just send in the Apache to finish off the job. And with its auto cannon and a few missiles, that's the end of the game and his last command vehicle is destroyed. See, it's a pretty dominant victory for me and I pretty much did it because I learnt from my previous game. There you can see that he had, he's 1809 ELO and I'm 1527. He is actually six or 56 levels higher than me as well so it was a pretty good victory for me i was very chuffed by doing this uh, but he he made a big mistake by taking his command vehicle out of his first base and it is a risky strategy and he paid the price for it this time around i'm sure if i played him again he would never do that but um yeah I hope you enjoyed that guys, just a demonstration of air supremacy tactics. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.